Okay, well, I'd like to introduce Susanna Marcello and Hilary Kaplowitz as uh, our final speakers of this third session for the 2022 Summer Institute. So take it away. Thank you so much, Kevin. So we are presenting on Behind the Curtain, a look at the run of show. And my name is Susanna Marcello, and I'm presenting with Hilary Klapowitz, and we're both from the Office of Faculty Development at Cal State Northridge. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to attempt to really show you how the run of show works in uh, application. So what we're going to do is we're going to alternate between showing you the row or a couple of rows of the, our run of show document that we're using for our presentation. So I'll be doing that part. I'll be doing the behind the scenes. And Susanna will be giving a presentation as if it's in the class. So doing a high flex uh, scenario. And then we'll just keep alternating back and forth so you can see what's happening. So what's going to happen next, Susanna is going to do the hello and introduction. And you're going to notice how she is going to um, address the in-person folks, the online folks, and the asynchronous online folks. And one other thing, quick thing to note is that um, at CSUN, we added one other uh, column. One of our faculty thought it would be a good idea to put down what camera view they're using. So that's part of our run of show template. All right, Susanna, take it away. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody here on Zoom. For those of you coming in, go ahead and take your seats, have your notes ready. And for those of you watching in the future, remember that you can pause and participate in all of our activities. We're just getting everyone started here. We'll start in one second. All right, so everybody settle, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we decided that we were going to do a high flex course uh, to teach uh, other instructors what a high flex course would look like in different modalities. And so in our high flex course, the run of show became a very popular document with the faculty. Uh, we added a camera view to the uh, document and we want to show you what that looks like. So what we're going to do is present on how to be a good host, and you'll see every step along the way, how the run of show becomes helpful. All right. So next up, Susanna is going to do a quick Q&A. It's always a good idea to start off uh, making, sure, making sure everyone's on the same page. And so you'll see how Susanna does this uh, and addresses each of the audiences and gives an option, especially to those future viewers, what they can do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with a Q&A first. Uh, think back to what you learned last week, what we're about to learn today about being a good host. So Roomers, go ahead and raise your hand if you have any questions. Zoomers, you can do the same. You can raise your hand or type your question in the chat. And those of you watching in the future, go ahead and pause. We might address your question later on in the lesson. And you can also check Slack to see what questions and answers have already been posed there as well. All right. The next thing that's going to happen is the engagement trigger. So we're going to actually do that. So we want you to participate. So that'll come up. So pay attention to that. And again, you're going to notice Susanna is going to direct each of the audiences in how that they can engage. And again, super important for those future viewers giving them a way to feel included. Uh, it's, you know, kind of sucks to just watch something and know that you're not gonna get a chance to participate or that you're gonna enter something in and you're, it's never gonna be addressed. So watch how Susanna does that. And she's using the run of show to make sure she hits all of those points because it is hard to manage all of that at the same time. Okay, let's keep going. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and do an engagement trigger first. The prompt is, what is one word that describes how you feel about teaching or supporting flexible courses? For those of you in person, go ahead and use your personal devices to type in the URL in the chat. If you don't have your personal device with you today, identify the text scribe, they're over here in the corner, and then that person will be able to put in the answer for you. Zoomers, go ahead and look at the chat jockey who just put the link in the chat. When you click on the link, it will take you to the Answer Garden website. Go ahead and put your answer as well. 
And our future viewers, uh, you as well, go ahead and pause. You can add in your answer. And then once everyone in class has had a chance to participate, I will update the word cloud. And because Answer Garden uh, doesn't have good color contrast, I'm actually going to call out uh, the words that are in the word cloud as I show it. And when I put it in the announcement, I'll also list out what were the words used just to make sure that everybody is able to access the answer garden. So please go ahead and do that. You're going to have a couple more seconds to submit. And I'm going to pause the screen share for now so we can look at the answer garden here. So again, once you've submitted your one word, you will just going to wait. So just a couple more seconds and then I'll refresh. I guess in three, two, one. Okay, so we have here excited, nervous, anxious, enthusiastic, curious, and empowered. Okay, so those of you in person, would anyone like to comment on what you added here or anything that stands out to you? All right, um, my Zoomers, Kevin, can you please tell us which which word you chose and why did you choose that word? I chose empowerment because I think providing flexibility to our students helps them become more self-directed learners. Thank you so much. That's a great answer. Now for our future viewers, again, remember, I will update this word cloud uh, once everybody has contributed and I will list out the words as well. Thank you so much. Let's go back to our presentation here. All right, so the next thing we wanted to demonstrate is what a lecture would look like. So a very short lecture is about to happen and you're gonna notice that Susanna is going to address each audience again as she's consistently been doing and give them instructions where they can find the slides and how they can uh, engage with that material. All right, let's go to the lecture. Okay, so now the lesson is how to be a good host inclusion and accessibility. Now, um, the slides are available in this week's module. So those of you in person, you're free to use your personal device to open up the slides if you would like. Zoomers, you can do the same thing. Uh, the chat jockey put the link to the slides in the chat. So you can follow along, go back to it as needed. And those of you watching in the future, you can pause at any time so that you can stop to take notes. Also, remember that you can speed up or slow down the video for your viewing preference. And again, the slides are in this week's module. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, on being a good host, the inclusion part. There are four different points here in a circle in the center. We have be a good host, make eye contact, crowdsourcing, and play-by-play -play commentary. The first part, be a good host, is making sure that every student in each modality feels included. No one should feel like an observer. Making eye contact is really important for that. Uh, don't just focus on the students that are in the classroom with you. Take breaks to check in and engage the students on uh, Zoom and also to signal to the students watching in the future. Because this can, be, can become a lot, uh, this is where crowdsourcing really comes in handy. You can have student facilitators, especially if you don't have a student assistant. And the student facilitators could be the chat jockeys, the tech scribes, the timers, anything that you need to help the class run smoothly. And the play-by-play -play commentary is to make sure that each modality is then engaged in some way. So if someone asks a question in person, you want to repeat that question um, so that everybody can understand what was said. Same thing for the Zoomers. You want to repeat any questions that come up. And then also in the next week's lesson, once the future viewers have been able to go through the materials, you can also signal back to the questions that they may have had um, and also review it there for uh, the other modalities too. Now on being a good host for accessibility. So we have a circle here with three main points the physical space, the ASL interpreters, and describing the visuals out loud. 
For the physical space, you want to make sure that there aren't any physical barriers that are preventing students uh, from engaging, whether it's in person or if they are viewing on Zoom or the recording. You want to wear solid colors like I am right now and avoid standing in front of a window so that you don't have lighting issues. For the ASL interpreters, you want to coordinate with the students and the interpreters to make sure that everybody knows what modality they're going to be in and when. And that can become tricky, but just remember that students who need the interpreters, they know exactly what they need. The ASL interpreters know exactly what they need to. So simply follow along with their recommendations. For describing the visuals out loud, you want to make sure that you describe what's happening. And you want to read the prompts out loud and describe any notes. So if I were to be making notes on the slides, I would be describing that. And if students are adding notes to the slide or making notes uh, on the whiteboard in person, you also want to make sure that you describe what's happening too. All right. And then after any lecture, definitely want to have some time for Q&A. So this is really similar to that first uh, call, the first row we showed you. And again, encouraging uh, questions in real time and also for those future viewers. So um, with that, we can actually, we can take some questions. Um, Susanna, I want you to go to the next slide and we'll go from there. Okay. So are there any questions? Um, so rumors, remember you can raise your hand. Zoomers, type in in your question in the chat or use the raise hand feature. And our future viewers, go ahead and pause, check the Slack for any questions or uh, you can pose a question if we didn't address it. And of course, for any answers we might have had, you can also add your question to the course Q&A so that I can address it for next time. And yes, we will now take questions. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, well, we have one hand up. And we have one question in the chat. So Susanna, which one would you like to do first? Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and go with the um, uh, raised hand here. So Yasa. Thank you very much for your great presentation. Only I have one question. Uh, in the classes that you presented this idea, were all graduate course, undergraduate course, or what exactly was the level of the course? It was for any level. So any faculty teaching a high flex course at Cal State Northridge. And uh, can I ask another question? Sure. Uh, did you use some polls? Oh, absolutely. Um, there are different activities that we actually have as examples uh, in our cor course templates. And so we use polls, we use Padlet, Jamboard, we gamify all of those different engaging strateg strategies. For today, we just decided to model what it actually looks like because sometimes you can conceptualize something but until you see it in practice, sometimes it hits a little better that way. Okay. And um, well, I think uh, I will leave the other person. I don't want to take too much time. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. You can put the an another question you may have in the chat. That's also fine. Uh, but to address uh, Kevin's question. So Kevin said, does the ASL interpreter strategy apply to real-time captioners as well? Um, I would say yes to. Um, you would want to have a real-time captioner. And this is where, again, if you don't have a student assistant, um, having a student volunteer. And we had actually discussions about this. Um, how do you incentivize students? So that's part of our course as well. We provide some options for how to actually incentivize students to also help with the course. Um, so having those tech scribes, the chat jockeys, the captioners, they're all very helpful in helping you facilitate because realistically, um, as much as we want to sometimes, we can't really be there in all three places at once. We need to segment it and have that help so that we don't miss something. All right, uh, other questions, let's see. Okay, and so thank you so much for your comments. Um, I see a lot about modeling and how that was helpful. So we're really, really happy about that. That, it, that was the main goal that Hillary and I had. Uh, Hillary, would you like to say any final words? Uh, no, I think, um, I think the run of show just really is a really helpful tool. And um, I think there's a little bit of a difference between writing a run of show and then actually using one. And so you're going to find probably the first time that you didn't write everything down and that you might have forgotten something and that's okay. Uh, but you'll just keep improving it as you go because once you are using it in practice, you get to learn a lot very quickly. 
So it's a really great tool and I really appreciate uh, Kevin and all the work that he put into preparing that and all of the content from last year's that we really, really used a lot, so. And Hillary, we have um, um, people asking for our emails in the chat. So can you go ahead and put yours? And um, one other thing, someone else also asked about the mass. Um, let me go ahead and identify the question. Um, okay, so um, how did you handle giving instruction with the mask so the students can hear you in class and on Zoom? And Kevin gave a really excellent answer. Um, so Kevin says, research shows that surgical masks allow for the clearer speech, absolutely. And the newer duck-built N95 masks are good as well. Um, I know that there are also some clear masks too, um, but you do wanna also check with your uh, campus because your campus might have specific masks that they want you to use as well. All right, thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, Kevin, for inviting us. Well, thank you both for really giving a fantastic demonstration of not only an idea, but an idea in practice. And so thanks to you for doing that. And thanks to all the speakers from today. I'm gonna to stop the recording. And so for those of you who are watching the recording, we'll see you in the Canvas space and in Slack. And we'll see everyone who can join us live here again on Thursday.